Hi there, it's Mark back with another Lightroom tutorial and today we're going to be looking at painting in Lightroom. Yes, painting. There's an often overlooked feature within the local masking which allows you to apply specific individual colours of your choice but when you use it with the brush you can literally paint and that's what we're going to be doing. So the pictures we've got to work on are this cat and we're going to do something like that. We've got this teddy which was tied to a railing in Newcastle. Funny what they do in Newcastle. And we're going to paint that. And then there's this bridge in York where predominantly we're just going to work underneath the bridge and uh, accentuate the reflections and the sun. And here I used it just to demonstrate how we can put a little bit of autumnal colour into the trees. We take the colours green from this door and shutter and apply it to the front of this building here and I think I darkened the tarmac. Yes I did. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, these pictures are all in the zip file. That zip file is on my website. The link to my website is down below. So if you want to press pause, go and get those, load them in Lightroom. I'll meet you up on the other side of the titles which will be in about six or seven seconds. Just enough time if you haven't already to click on that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be told of future videos as and when I release them. And if you think this video warrants a like, I won't ask for one up front, but if you think it warrants one at any time during this watching, at any time during this watching, I really should script these, shouldn't I? Or sound like Yoda, I will. Uh, just give it a thumbs up. See you shortly. So here we are in sunny Lightroom and we have our four pictures along the top. The ones on the bottom are the ones I edited just to give the little preview at the beginning. So let's just click on this one. D for our develop module and dive straight in. This is not difficult to do. And so what we're going to do is, well let's just click on auto, see what it does with the picture. Yeah, a little bit brighter, that's fine. Okay, we'll work with that. So, local adjustment. Pick a brush. Now, there are lots of other ways you can select things, but I'm just going to go with the brush. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger with my left-hand bracket key. The red circle is just a marker around my mouse. It's not to do with the brush size. Hopefully, you can see the uh, outlines on the brush. I've got a little bit of a feather on there. I've got full flow and full density and I've got auto mask clicked so it stays within the lines and I'm just going to curl down here like so. Now for whatever reason Lightroom's decided not quite to stick within the lines probably because it didn't really see the white on the inside and the white on the outside has been too much of a border. So let's fix that now by subtracting that. Option key changes my plus brush to a minus brush. If you're on a PC, that key is the Alt key. Still holding that down, I'm going to use my bracket key to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to come down and tidy that a little bit up. And because we're doing soft little tints of pastels, it's not really necessary to worry too much about staying exactly in the lines. Don't get fixated on it. And where is this painting then? Well, that painting is purely just the colour of my overlay because we've not applied anything yet. And my colour overlay I've set to this horrible colour to make it more garish so I can see it more clearly against other things. So you just click on the little box, choose your colour, choose the opacity of it and away you go. So here's that little box. Let's click on it and let's put a colour in. So let's go for a, a blue that's a bit strong, so if I take this up, I get a greater saturation. You can see the saturation slider coming along here. And if I bring it down, I get less saturation. And when it's at the bottom, effectively there's no colour applied. Therefore, it goes back to showing the overlay. Let me just nudge it up a little bit. And probably a little bit more. There. I'm just going to leave that like that. This is the first and easiest one. Well, they're all easy, really, just to get us in the swing of things. Let us now choose another brush. Pick a colour first this time. 
So I'm going to put in a little bit of a yellow color. And I'm going to do this step. Now, because this is a brush, I can click once. I can move my cursor at the other side, hold down my shift key and click again, and I will get a straight line. So click, move, shift, click, move, shift, click, move, shift, click, move, shift, click. And yes, it's spilled over again. So who cares? Let's press option key or alt key on a PC. And let's just take that out there. OK, that's a little bit strong, so let's click back in. This is the beauty of uh, masks. You can always go back in and adjust. And let's bring that down. Now, I did say we'd paint this, and I did say in the introduction it wasn't done with, with overlays and such. However, you can still alter the saturation using the saturation slider. But if you notice, it doesn't make a great deal of difference here because this is just a subtle change. We could still darken using tonal controls. So you have those in addition to, but for now, we're just more or less painting. If you want to do anything else, there is a, a, a reddish tinge already in this. So let's put another brush in. And let's pick a reddish tinge. We can also change it later. So just somewhere around there. Click. And then we will just make the brush much bigger. With my right hand bracket key. And I'm just going to paint in there. And down. And across. And I'm going to roll that one back as well. I'll use the slider this time. There you are, nice and subtle. So let's have a look at our before and after, which is our backslash key, before and after. And that is how we'd go about painting. Whether you like the colours is irrelevant, it's the technique and to use it that is more important. Our next picture. My favourite actually was this teddy bear. So let's just zoom in a little bit on this. Let's go 100% and centre it. And let's just, oh, I must have already clicked on auto. Tell you what, let's reset it. Click on auto again. Okay, we're going to highlight this um, toweling that's, that's around the bear. Now we could choose the colour in our local adjustment by saying let's pick a range, let's pick a colour, let's click on there. But there's some of that colour all over the place. That's not a problem. I'm just bear with me for the moment. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. That's not a problem because one of the quick ways to use a colour and then refine it is to have it intersect. Here's your add and subtract. Let us press our Option key or Alt key, and it becomes Intersect. I click Intersect. I choose Intersect with a brush. So now it will only show up where I paint. So if I now just paint in here, that selection that was formerly across the bars, it was formerly along the trees, and it was in the Teddy's hair, is picked out. Now that is one very quick way to make a selection. Spilt onto his leg a little bit. Alt and Option key, make that a little bit smaller. Alt and Option key just makes it a minus. So I can just take that out. And now I can click in and choose the color. There we go. But I think there's something a little bit more therapeutic about just brushing it in. But that was just to show it will work with other selection techniques. And that's a very powerful technique, by the way. Pick a colour and then, which even if that colour spreads all over the screen, use an intersect with a brush. So let's just create another brush. And we won't pick a colour. We won't pick anything yet. So because of that, it will just paint with the overlay. I've still got full density and flow and auto mask. 
and we will just click on Ted's head. Like I say, very therapeutic, just painting away. Now this is so much easier with a tablet because it feels like you are painting a bit more. But um, I find it perfectly okay with the mouse. Right, I've chose that. I want to make it a little bit more brown colour, which is probably over here in the oranges. A little bit strong, roll that saturation back. Shut that down. And let's do before and after with our backslash key. There you go. So York was next. And this bridge. So what I want to do here, particularly in the reflection as well, was make it a little bit more bright of a colour. I mean a different hue. So let's choose a brush. Let's come in here, pick something a little bit more saturated orange. And with our brush, I'm just going to follow that line down. Like so. I'll do a quick before and after so you can see that little bit before and after I'd also clicked on auto by the looks of it so there we go but I'm actually going to extend this now into the water and let's see about changing that colour up a little bit more see what it looks like towards the reds yeah I like that it's not the colour I demoed at the very beginning because I think it starts to match some of the reds in the building coming down and the side of that building up there Okay, so clearly we've got a sun from somewhere behind my shoulder if I'm the photographer, and I was the photographer, and it's it's lit up this, this tower here, it's coming down through under the bridge, it's lighting in the water, it's on the face here. I know it isn't actually hitting this turret. Great cafe, by the way, this turret. Um, excellent coffee. But let's make it look like it was. So what we can do is we can select an object so again I'm breaking away from this being a brush now and with my select object on this mode not square mode or rather bounded mode uh, what's this okay so if I do that I can actually drag out and say find me the object within there okay control Z or with object on that mode I can draw it in so I'm just going to draw around and you do not have to be accurate with this it tries to tidy up for you there we go sometimes you can color it in sometimes you can just leave it and it will fill in but you know what i said this is therapeutic just playing with the brush so i'm just going to let it play with the brush see what it does okay that's a little bit better it took a bit more than i wanted it to but let's come in here and pick a yellowy orange just to brighten that turret up a little bit more. I think about there. And I'm going to call it a day on that one as well. So uh, we've highlighted on the bridge, took the colour in and we've painted over here. Finally, and something to point out. Now I'm going to do something which won't work. So I'm going to colour this uh, green shutter. So let's go in and create a brush. Let us paint with our brush. And I've still got auto mask on to keep it inside the lines, even though it's crept out a little bit. And now I'm going to pick a color uh, of red. And it makes it like a muddy brown. And where were, there were some light bits in, just zooming all the way in, where there were some light bits in, you can see that colour starting to come through. These are all my space bars. So my key tracker just shows those as upside down brackets. You can see that it has brought that colour in. So you've got to be mindful you're painting on top of another colour here. So some will work, some won't. What does a blue look like, for example? That kind of dominates. It, it's working its way around the green. But I wanted a little bit more green. Possibly that green there. Let us zoom out a bit. And you can see how it is a lighter colour. And while I've still got my brush, I'm just going to paint down through this door. I 
and I'm going to paint on the front of this here, slap dash. So let's do the side of that window. So we're doing the whole hut now, but I've gone over the window. So what do I do? Alt key or option key, take that down and take it out that window. Take it off the top of the sign there. And let's zoom out. Click on fit. And if I switch this little eye off, you'll see the masks get switched off and you can see how we've actually colorized that. How to do the tarmac. Again, I want a new brush. I'm just going to take a bit of exposure down this time. And put in a bit more of a muddy orange. And then just come down and brush in. Now because we're kind of doing straight lines here, one of the things you can do with the brush is, as I showed earlier, click, shift, hold, click. But there we go. What colour do you want your tarmac to be? And it literally is painting. And that's why I like this. And sometimes I give myself that challenge to do that. Now that for me is a little bit too strong. It wasn't the colour I originally tried, but you never know till you try. Something about there, I think, is better. Let's switch that brush off and on. Let's have a look. Off and on. Okay. With the trees, all I did was I chose a colour range this time, clicked into the tree, and it'll find that colour all over the place. So again, I chose my optional alt key to choose intersect with a brush. Made the brush a bit bigger and I just kind of chose part of the trees. It won't go in the sky. The mask ensures that because we're intersecting with the mask that was already done. It's quite flaky. I didn't want all the trees. Just wanted parts of the trees. And now... I can choose the colour a little bit more autumnal by coming into an orange. Possibly over to red and then switch that one off and on. And you can see the difference it's making there. More so on this tree here. And there you go. That's kind of it. You can just play with that. Does it work in black and white? I heard someone say. That's a good question. Let's go back to resetting this picture. Let's now just stick a black and white on it. And can we paint on black and white? Place your bets. What do you think? Brush. Green. Decided yet? Well, what do you know? Now then, talk about therapeutic. You could take a picture, make it black and white, and selectively colorize it. So let's try a different color. Does it suffer from the same issue we had if I put a red in there? It's not exactly red. What about the blue? So we're getting more saturation closer to the colour selected because we went black and white first. I'm going to leave it there. You could actually take this and paint the whole thing. You can zoom in to make things a little bit more detailed. You could then alt, alt an option key, for example, on here and be very specific and start to take it out on things like the hinges and such where you might not want it to look painted like so. Okay, I have stopped now, honest. I've put my mouse down. I'm standing back from the computer and I'm going to say bye-bye. If you've got any suggestions for things you would like me to cover off, pop them in comments. Other than that, I think this might have warranted a thumbs up, so please tap that thumbs up icon, show YouTube that you like my stuff, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, have a good one. See you next time.